wanted to ask you about Roy Keane. You played with him, yeah. obviously, in his in his earlier years. You made the point, you said he was the difference between us being a very, very good team and an exceptional team, which is quite the statement yeah. about an already brilliant Manchester United team. Why specifically was that? Um, well, Gaz has obviously told you about Sir Alex's drive and his mentality of, of will to win. Uh, Keeney had that in abundance as well, if, if not more than Sir Alex. Um, he was... So Alex is lieutenant on the pitch. Whatever uh, he told us in the dressing room, Roy Keane took it out onto the pitch and, and demanded it out on the pitch of, of every Manchester United player that was uh, pulling on the red shirt. Uh, he just had that aura about him. He didn't care who he upset. It was the drive to make Manchester United a better team on the pitch. And without a doubt, if, you know, Gaz has mentioned all the, the, the best midfielders that we had, but if Roy wasn't playing, we weren't quite the same team. I don't know if Gaz feels the same way about that, but I definitely do. Yeah, I mean, definitely the most, I said last year, the, the, when we did this interview, the most influential football player that I've ever played with in terms of his impact on the rest of his teammates. Um, immense on the pitch in every single way. If we needed to defend, he would be the defender. If we needed to pass and keep possession, he would be the he would be the passer. And if you wanted to attack and drive into the box, he'd then go and put himself into the box and throw himself um, at the ball as well. And just a, an incredible football player. Uh, like I say, drive and determination that you just can't even begin to put into words. You just have to witness it. It was something ridiculous. Um, the, 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 the determination and the sort of obsession with winning and doing anything to win and making sure his teammates did anything to win and pulling them with him. Teddy mentions the aura. I mean, it's amazing always to hear fellow pros who are so driven themselves, like not least yourself, Gary, as we, we touched on at the start of the interview, and, and yet his aura seems on a slightly higher plane. But you made the point last year in Dublin, like he's, he's complicated, you know, like he's often very, very shy at times, you said, or, you know, he's very, very funny. And, and this is a really multifaceted person and we get the caricature very often. Yeah, I'd, like I say, I work with him now, obviously lucky uh, enough to work with him with Sky. And you see somebody who's a storyteller, charming, somebody who's um, funny, humorous. And to be fair, I don't even need to sit on here and talk about these things, really, because the things that if you know him that you would know and you don't need to sort of talk about. But um, the football player was, was an immense character and personality, somebody who was massively talented in terms of the way in which he could play the game because he had the he had the sort of the strength and the endurance and the stamina but he had the intelligence and the ability as well and the sort of knowledge how to play the game um but off the pitch was one of the lads was um you know, it's like Sir Alex, you know, the hairdryer is 1% of their life. Yeah. Maybe 0.1% of their life. And the same with Roy, it was 0.1% of his life. But it's the point that stands out, obviously, in terms of what people want to mention, but it's not the real sort of uh, personality of him or what he is. Mm. I've got to disagree with that. It's a little bit more than 0.1, right? <laughs> <laughs> with Roy. <laughs> well, you, you said there's five, eight. That five. 5.2, <laughs> I think, out of the 10. <laughs> Maybe more with me. <laughs> yeah. And all you young boys. Yeah. He did used to take it out. And you young no, boys, he would. I mean, and the boss, and to be fair, I think that's because one, we needed, we felt, we, we actually, we actually thrived on it. We thrived yeah, on it because that's what made us more alert. We, we lived off it. We, that idea that you were always on guard. Every single day you were on guard. You weren't able to drop your standards. There was someone there watching you. It's almost like they're like father figures. You, you know, my dad was like that when I was younger. You know, what was up with you today if I played after a game? First thing he'd say to me in the car, what was up with you today? They'd be his words. Right. And you knew that right. you were going to get a grilling on the way home as to why you weren't at your best, why you weren't playing well. What, why didn't you do this? And that's what you need. You know, the element of, it's not, it's not being stressed, it's being stretched. You're being stretched all the time. And you have to challenge people. And you have to be able to deliver criticism and deliver harsh words, but sometimes in a way which means that people grow because there's no elite sportsman or um, sportsman who's played at the top level for 15, 20 years has had it easy yeah. and hasn't been yeah. pushed and stretched and demanded from. I'll tell you, tell you what the unusual thing with Roy is. 
you know, in every club, in every big club, you've got leaders that demand stuff. He didn't care if you hated him. Whereas a lot of, a lot of leaders want to be loved as well at the same time. And, and, you know, they want to go out and have a laugh. And but with Roy, that wasn't the case. If, at, at the end of the day, all he wanted to do was win and be the best. And he didn't care who he upset and who didn't talk to him and who wasn't his friend in that, in that manner to, to get to the top. That's, that's probably what divides him from people like Shearer, maybe, who was, who was a proper leader and demand of, of uh, top level. Uh, Tony Adams, you know, all these players, I, I think, are all top, top players and leaders of their clubs and captains. But I think Roy just didn't give a monkey's who he upset along the way to, to make Man United the best. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I played with like Stuart Pearce and with, with Tony Adams and Alan Shearer and great leaders, but they were nowhere near, nowhere near him in terms of the impact that he would have on his other players, the team, the players he played with and also the opposition players. Nowhere near. Um, he was a different level uh, of captain. Someone that, you know, I, I, I got the captaincy when he left. But I always say this, I would never have not wanted Roy Keane to be at the front of the tunnel of our tunnel because I knew that we were going to be a winning team if he was there. The most important thing for him was on the pitch, um, every day in training, and every every time we won a football, every time we played a football match, we had to win. We had to win, simple as that. How we just said about what he was, he, he was the, down to the nth degree, he was the proper professional. 